10201, Will here. Do you have no idea what Declan is? Does the thought of Declan make you want to cry? Well, that sucks, because Declan's here to stay. Let's start with half the equation. Cyclohexane. So, this is cyclohexane, and this is a planar representation of the molecule. It's a uh, molecular formula C6H12, and it's the most stable uh, ring structure that's uh, known. And to understand why it's the most stable, we must consider its chair conformation, which you can see here. And one of the main reasons it's the most stable is because it has the least torsional strain between the carbon molecules, and that, that's because it has the least distortion from 109.5 degrees, which is the ideal angle between um, one angle for sp3 hybridized carbons, which are seen here. And we can see this from the bond angles between the carbons as shown in this diagram. Additionally, the uh, six-membered ring provides the least steric strain. And we can see this through a um, Newman projection. Looking through this bond and these two bonds in the chair conformation, we can see that all of the H's are, have uh, 60 degrees between, between them, and they are staggered. And there's no Gauche interaction between them, which, makes, which limits the steric strain and makes it the most stable um, Confirmation for six carbon rings. So, when we're talking about hydrogens and cyclohexane, they can be divided into axial groups and equatorial groups. Axial groups are perpendicular to the plane of the molecule and either point straight up or straight down. And as you can see, the up down pattern alternates between carbons. Equatorial hydrogens are the other kind and they follow the plane of the molecule. Another important distinction to make is up versus down when we're talking about groups in cyclohexane. Up and down do not have any direct relationship to axial and equatorial. As you can see on this carbon, the axial is up and the equatorial is down. And on this carbon, the equatorial is up and the axial is down. It alternates between carbons. Next, we're going to talk about chair interconversion. With every cyclohexane conformation, you can, draw, you can draw two different chair configurations. As you can see here, we have different orientations of the axial versus the equatorial hydrogens. Now, if we look at the numbering of the carbons in this ring, we'll see that the one carbon here corresponds to the one carbon here. Now, although these molecules are drawn slightly differently, these are actually the same location within the molecule. In the first case, on the left, Hydrogen A is axial, is axial, and hydrogen B is equatorial. In the second, hydrogen A is equatorial, and hydrogen B is axial. But they've both retained their up or down position relative to the ring. It's also worth noting that cyclohexane is constantly interconverting between these two configurations. And the position which is favored is dependent on the stereochemistry of the groups which are attached. So, as my friend Greg was saying, you can see that if we replace a hydrogen with a turbutyl group here, you can see interactions between an axial um, hydrogen and a turbutyl group. And these are one three diacyl interactions, because if you consider the turbutyl to be number one, then each of these hydrogens are exactly position three away from the turbutyl group. And a one three diacyl interaction is also a methane turbutyl Gauche interaction if you were to look down either this part of the ring or this part of the ring. As you can see, the turbutyl and the ring, which is equivalent to a methane group in energy, creates a Gauche interaction here. But within the ring, the methane groups are intramolecular, so they don't create an interaction Gauche in the ring. Now over here in the equatorial chair conformation, you can see that this turbutyl group doesn't like to interact with anything, and thus this is the more stable conformer. We can consider two adjacent trees in the forest as two axial groups on the cyclohexane molecule. If we imagine those two trees to be two carbons apart, we can see that their branches interact with each other, which is analogous to the 1-3 diaxial strain between two axial groups. However, if one of those trees were to fall down or fall over to the side and assume an equatorial position, their branches would no longer be able to interact and there would be no more diaxial interaction between them, thus rendering the molecule more stable. 
Now I want to introduce you to Wong's favorite compound, decalin. Decalin is a bicyclic uh, two-membered compound composed of 10 carbons and 18 hydrogens. As you can see here, there are two forms of decalin called transdecalin and cisdecalin. Transdecalin is differentiated from cisdecalin due to the fact that the hydrogens on these parts of the, car of the rings um, are pointed in opposite directions. So as you can see, the hydrogen here and the hydrogen here are both axial, however this one is up and this one is down. One thing to mention about transdecalin, however, is that it cannot undergo tear into conversion. As you can see, if you were to try to do that, the angular strain would be so great that the rings would be pointing in completely opposite directions. Cisdecalin, on the other hand, has the hydrogens pointing both down. However, you can see that they are not both axial. One of them is axial, while the other is equatorial. And if you do the chair interview conversion, you can see that the one carbon corresponds to the one carbon here, and the two carbon corresponds, and so forth. And here is the line of wedge representation in which you can see that both are dashed, mentioning that they're coming at the same direction. So here you can see that we've drawn a cis chair conformer, and you can see that this cis chair conformer has one of the cyclohexanes in the axial position. And because of this, you're going to have diaxial interactions here. You can assume that this chair conformer here, the carbon here, is acting as a methyl, and that will act in a diaxial manner, a 1-3 diaxial interaction with this hydrogen and this hydrogen. Um, and then this carbon over here will also interact with only this hydrogen at 1, 3 diaxo because it's farther than 3 away from this hydrogen. And you end up getting energy of 0 0.9 per diaxo interaction. So times 3, you get a total of 2.7 kilocalories per mole more or more energy in a cis conformer than you would in a trans -conformer.